Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Deep Dives at the Peterson Automotive Museum. Today we're going to take a look at Ferdinand Marcos's 1988 Mercedes-Benz 560 SEL armor plated. Heads of state always seem to have had it a little bit better than most people when it came to their selection of vehicles. But in those countries that did not have an indigenous motor, motoring industry, the go-to cars were either Rolls-Royce or Mercedes-Benz. And Mercedes-Benz had kind of a lock on the market in the 70s and in the 80s with their marvelous 600s and their, their, their long wheelbase Pullman limousines and land delay versions. But after Mercedes tapered off production of the 600, the largest car that they were left with was the S-Class. Uh, in this case, the SEL, uh, which was the long wheelbase version of the S-Class. They made these from 1979 to 1991. They made over 800,000 of them, but very few came armored. And this car has armor plating, it has Kevlar in the doors, it has uh, bullet uh, proof, uh, bullet probably more resistant than proof glass on the side. Windows do not go up or down. And you'll notice that they're flat. They're not curved because uh, in the day, the only way they could get a, a bulletproof glass uh, in a um, configuration that would not distort when you look uh, out of it was to make it flat. Uh, even the windshield is, um, is uh, specially made, but they, they were able to uh, make a curved version of that um, uh, bulletproof. So uh, the car is uh, actually very heavy. It doesn't look like much, but but that's kind of the idea when it comes to a car like this. Uh, it was used by Ferdinand Marcos uh, when he was in Hawaii. And Ferdinand Marcos is a guy that had a lot of people mad at him. And he did not want to drive around seeking attention. So he drove around in a fairly uh, I, unremarkable Mercedes. Now, Mercedes in and of themselves are, are not unremarkable cars, but you don't want to draw any more attention to you, uh, than you than you absolutely had to. And you still wanted to drive around in a little bit of luxury, and you still wanted to have the kind of engineering that would get you out of trouble if you ever needed to. So this car has a lot of interesting um, features uh, f uh, as befits its um, uh, used by a former head of state. Now this car, in addition to the Kevlar in the doors and the bulletproof glass, it has other features like microphones. And you can, you can pick up a, um, a microphone on the inside of the car and you can talk to people outside through speakers that are, that are positioned around the car. You also have in the rear airplane landing lights to foil potential pursuers. And if the airplane landing lights didn't do it, uh, you had two more options. One of them was to create an oil slick by releasing uh, oil on the road behind you or creating a smoke screen. Probably we believe by dripping oil on a hot uh, surface and creating a, a, um, a, a cloud that you, you couldn't see through. So if Ferdinand ever wanted to get away from anybody, that was going to help him do do just that. Well, these kinds of cars are so popular with the um, class of people that needed armored protection that Mercedes-Benz ultimately decided to make a production version of this. And they do not divulge much about it, but uh, you can still get one. You can still get one in the Mercedes uh, or the Maybach series of vehicles um, uh, at a substantially increased cost. Again, they don't give away too much. Uh, it, it's tough to quote a price, but um, uh, let's just say it would be substantially more than your average Mercedes. This car was originally the property of Ferdinand Marcos of the Philippines. And I, I, I do believe it his, his wife, who's maybe a little bit better known than he is because of the shoes that they found, Imelda Marcos and her shoes. Um, uh, but Ferdinand got this car in 1988, but it was later seized by the U.S. Marshal uh, as partial payment for a judgment uh, in favor of all the people that he imprisoned or tortured or executed. And uh, soon after he 
uh, several years after he died, they, they, they seized the car, uh, sold it, and it came on the market. Um, it was uh, ultimately acquired by uh, an organization that later donated it to the Peterson Automotive Museum in addition with a number of other cars. This was the Imperial Palace in, in Las Vegas. And we're very grateful for them. It, 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 it kind of shows how uh, the symbiotic relationship that, that car enthusiasts and car collectors and car museums have with each other. And uh, we're, we're very grateful for them to, to have donated it to us. And, uh, and for having done so, it's given us yet another car to help round out the historical record. Thank you for joining me on another edition of Deep Dives at the Peterson Automotive Museum. We'll see you next time.